Today's story is about a young child named John Patrick Norman McHennessy. Not only does John Patrick Norman McHennessy have an impressive sounding name, he has an impressive imagination. What is imagination? Imagination is when you make believe something is anything you want it to be. For example, when I was a little kid, I would take my favorite stuffed animal on a hike through dangerous mountainsides. Well, I actually, I'd pretend the sofas in my living room were the mountains, and thank goodness my mom did not mind me climbing on the backs of them. I pretended there was lava all around, and the footstool was an island I could jump to for safety. In today's story, John Patrick Norman McHennessy, the boy who was always late, you will have to decide if John is using his imagination or if what is happening is really going on. Have fun deciding. Oh, and check out another story I have on my channel. It has a similar plot with two boys who are always late. I can't wait for you to find out why. Let's begin today's story. But first, I want to share that this author has other books you might want to check out, as do all the other books I have read aloud. It is important to support authors by buying some of their books. The author who wrote this book was from the United Kingdom, or England. Some of my viewers are from there. Hello, and thank you for watching. Anyway, the teacher in this story gives out punishments by making students write the same sentence over and over. I don't think any teachers do that anymore, but when I was a child, teachers certainly did. By the way, teachers, just like any other adult, aren't perfect. Let's see what you think about the teacher in this story. John Patrick Norman McHennessy set off along the road to learn. On the way, a crocodile came out of a drain and got hold of his satchel. John Patrick Norman McHennessy pulled and pulled, but the crocodile would not let go. He threw a glove into the air and the crocodile snapped at the glove and let go of the satchel. John Patrick Norman McHennessy hurried along the road to learn, but the crocodile had made him late. John Patrick Norman McHennessy, you are late. And where is your other glove? I am late, sir, because on the way a crocodile came out of a drain and got hold of my satchel and would only let go when I threw my glove, which he ate. There are no crocodiles living in the drains around here. You are to stay in late and write out three hundred times. I must not tell lies about crocodiles and I must not lose my glove. So John Patrick Norman McHennessy stayed in late and wrote out three hundred times. I must not tell lies about crocodiles and I must not lose my glove. John Patrick Norman McHennessy hurried off along the road to learn. Oh, looks like it's a new day. But on the way, a lion came out of the bushes and tore his trousers. He managed to climb up a tree. He stayed up the tree until the lion lost interest in him and went away. John Patrick Norman McHennessy hurried off along the road to learn, but he was late because of the lion. Do you notice John has a new satchel? You are late again, John Patrick Norman McHennessy, and you have torn your trousers. I am late, sir, because on my way here, a lion jumped out of the bushes and tore my trousers, and I had to climb a tree and wait until the lion went away. There are no such things as lions in the bushes around here. You are to stand in the corner and say out loud four hundred times, I must not tell lies about lions, and I must not tear my trousers. John Patrick Norman McHennessy stood in the corner and said out loud four hundred times, I must not tell lies about lions, and I must not tear my trousers. 
John Patrick Norman McHennessy hurried off along the road to learn. Looks like it's another new day. And I hope you watch this again and notice the illustrations, what colors are used each time there's a new day. <laughs> but on the way, as he was crossing the bridge over the river, a huge tidal wave swept him off his feet. He managed to cling onto the rail until the wave had passed and the water had gone down. John Patrick Norman McHennessy hurried along the road to learn, but he was late because of the tidal wave. You are late again, John Patrick Norman McHennessy, and your clothes are wet. I am late, sir, because on my way here, as I was crossing the bridge, a tidal wave swept me off my feet and made me wet, and I had to cling on to the rail until the water went down. There are no such things as tidal waves in the rivers around here that sweep people off the bridges. You will be locked in until you have written down 500 times. I must not tell lies about tidal waves in the river, and I must not get my clothes wet. And if you keep telling these lies and being late, I may have to hit you with my stick. Now, I don't know any teacher who would say or do such a thing, but it would be interesting for you to ask your parents or grandparents what type of punishments were there for students when they were growing up. All right, let's get back to the story. So John Patrick Norman McHennessy was locked in until he had written down 500 times I must not tell lies about tidal waves in the river, and I must not get my clothes wet. John Patrick Norman McHennessy hurried along the road to learn. On the way, nothing happened, and he was able to be on time. John Patrick Norman McKennessy, I am being held up in the roof by a great big hairy gorilla. You are to get me down at once. There are no such things as great big hairy gorillas in the roofs around here, sir. And John Patrick Norman McHennessy set off along the road to learn. Don't forget about this book, The Secret Shortcut. These two boys are always late. And if you look at the illustrations, you might be able to guess why. But first, I hope you go and do something with that great imagination of yours. <laughs>